You cannot confidently talk about a vehicle until you have disassembled it fully, as Ilya from Klubny Service said once. And I completely agree with him. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am Dimitri, and this is Value Cars Australia. And today we are continuing our mini series where I'm focusing on the newcomer to the Australian market, a new model from Cherry Australia, Cherry Tigo 7 Pro. Cherry Tigo 7 Pro has already been rolled out on the territory of many countries, including Russia, for the past two plus years. Yes, the cars have maybe marginally improved themselves in quality, because today is 2023 and this video that I'm translating is from 2021. And today we're following one completely not arguably a specialist, he is a specialist. This guy knows what he's talking about. I've been translating his videos for a very long time. Well, he will talk to us about the engine of the vehicle, about the underbelly of the vehicle, about the suspension of the vehicle, how it's put together. And in the second half, next time, we are going to kind of continue from this part one into that part number two, where he will talk more about the interior, how the interior panels, all this stuff that allegedly is creaking and other kind of stuff is assembled. How does that sound? If that sounds all right, Give me a like, enjoy the video, subscribe for more and talk to me in the comments down below as long as you remain not a troll and respectful and not too obviously being just a cherry dealer who thought that I told people to save their money. Ilya starts by saying that in his view Chinese car manufacturers produce cars slightly differently to Europeans, Japanese, Americans and so on. And the key difference is the sheer size of the internal Chinese market that they are all trying to fit in and obviously be successful in to start with before they have sufficient volumes to go wide and start exporting their vehicles to other countries. To achieve these insanely high volumes of annual sales compared to other car manufacturers anyway, most of them try and appeal to the general consumer by a whole bunch of inexpensive but fancy looking features, usually the interior, and things like panoramic sunroof, anatomic bucket seats, and all sorts of smart active safety systems. Plus, basic usability options for an average Joe or Jane, such as giving the car substantial clearance, which in the case of Cherry Tigo 7 Pro is around 19 centimeters, which is rather generous. And while this particular model he's reviewing is only a two-wheel drive model, there is high likelihood that someone was still going to take this car off-road, off the beaten path, through some not very challenging mud, say, on their way to their country house. A rear suspension of Tigo 7 Pro is a multi-lever, spring-based independent suspension, slightly more fancy than Ilya says he would have expected from a car within this price range, whatever that price range was across Russia two years ago when this video was recorded. We certainly can't say that in our versions of Tigo 7 Pro that entered the Australian market in 2023 because they are a lot more expensive. So here Ilya is just pointing out how these multiple arms or levers supporting the rear wheels are attached to the wheel fitting. This type of rear suspension improves maneuverability of the car compared to the solid rear axle constructions we've seen on many other vehicles. Braking system is a single piston electric enabled system and here Ilya says that there is plenty of space for the main driving shaft kind of to be fitted in which shows us that it's not here currently on this two wheel drive model but it shows that uh, the construction of the vehicle and the same structure is perfectly applicable to kind of upgrade it to an all wheel drive system and as we know we do have Cherry Tigo 7 Pro in all wheel drive in 2020. 23 that is the one that I test drove and that is the one that costs around 45,000 Australian dollars and you be the judge of whether or not that price point is too expensive or not I have already published a rather detailed video where I talked about uh, you know that in case you missed it this video is sponsored by copyright wireless carplay system. I think that it's particularly good for older vehicles or cheaper vehicles of Chinese or any other origin, the ones that do not have a very good Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you have extra real estate available and you don't mind extra additional screen, because that's the only con consideration here, or if your current screen is not used and you want to just like overhang one over another, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to install it, watch my other video for a full proper review of copyright system, 
then copyright is exactly what you should look for. If you are happy with your own screen, maybe, maybe some other wireless adapter will work better for you. Watch my other videos. But if you don't, and if you would like an extra screen, then copyright is exactly for you. Uh, this vehicle, Ilya says, has between 3 and 4,000 kilometers on the clock already. It's still pretty new, but not completely brand, brand, brand new. But still, there is no rust on the exhaust pipe. And Ilya says that the bottom of the vehicle body is actually also covered by some kind of anti-corrosion spray. But it is not to be mistaken with some kind of factory applied spray. It's a dealer applied spray, which tells us something, namely that the dealer expects the car to rust as it gets exposed to the Russian snow and mud or any other equivalent harsh conditions of Australia or South Africa or you name it wherever you are. So they decided not to wait for the bad news, so to speak, and go ahead with the aftermarket corrosion protection straight away. Smart people, what else can I say here? Here Ilya says that uh, Chinese car makers are very different, I keep saying the same thing, and uh, they construct their vehicles quite differently. He clearly points out that uh, there are some that will not uh, hide the uh, fuel pipes or some kind of other smaller elements, um, but in this particular case they, these pipes are hidden behind the kind of the lowest point of the vehicle's body so they are less exposed to potential terrain damage in case you did go a little bit off-road yeah having those little pipes fuel pipes etc tucked in is a good thing and uh, the engine here in the car is a rather small Ilya says and it is expected to be revving up quite a bit producing quite a bit of noise as you speed up or go uphill when the car is loaded up or has full or a passenger in every seat. Which is surely one of the reasons at the very least Elias thinks that Cherry has factory applied sound insulation layer here on the frontal bits of, that are facing the engine bay. There are three radiators installed as layers, if you will. The first layer is the one for the air conditioner. The second one is for the intercooler. That's the one that works to cool down the turbine. And finally, the third one is the radiator that's actually cooling the engine itself. Speaking of the engine, it's a China-made 1.5 liter, 147 horsepower and 210 newton meters of torque turbo petrol engine. Ilya points out that the main cylinder block is made of cast iron, which is very important for any aftermarket cheap tuning that we know is very popular in Russia, for example, or in any other country where foreign made and imported vehicles are deforced, so to speak, the reduced kind of, uh, they are, they have reduced number of amount of horsepower for import purposes to reduce the taxes or to fit into some other local country regulations. So if you as an owner of the car want to lift that horsepower output back to where it's intended to be, or even just push it a little bit further within the safe kind of ranges, then on a cast iron engine you have much higher chances of being successful in that process and not get blown up in the process or losing the engine. Cherry actually produces around 1 million of similar engines per year, which is freaking impressive. Remember, we talked about volumes a lot. Yeah, um, and there are four cylinders here, and we can also see a little bit of Honeywell uh, branded turbine. This engine is installed horizontally, widthwise of the car, so to speak, not lengthwise. So at the back of the engine here we have the exhaust system, we can see some bits of the exhaust system, and then there are some other fittings including the oil filter, and further down where the Ilya is pointing out we can see the other fittings for the steering column and electrically enabled steering bar. Now on to the transmission. This car that Ilya is talking about here actually has a CVT, the constantly variable transmission, um, that Cherry for some reason equips on their cars that they export at least to Russia. But I am well aware that the Australian version of Tigo 7 Pro has DCT, the dual clutch transmission on board. Uh, so most of these little insights I'm kind of bypassing here because they probably would be only for your information, not something for you to worry about or act upon.
This is a belt-based CVT, not a chain-based CVT, and that belt apparently is from Bosch company, and overall Ilya actually talks about the whole unit rather favorably, which makes me feel that the Australian market actually missed out on this particular element, um, getting a DCT instead. But yes, yes, cherry lovers and promoters will try and have a go at me here again, uh, that I am known to hate how DCT drives, uh, which is very true. I do hate how DCT drives, especially if it's not tuned perfectly fine. But there, there, pipe down, folks. Final thing that I will say in this first uh, half of the disassembly that I don't want to make too long deliberately uh, is that the engine in China, apparently this one has a lifetime warranty. And Ilya says that it may or may not be a marketing gimmick, but if we believe them, even if the rest of your car falls apart or rusts away entirely, you will still be able to replace the engine specifically with a new one whenever you want. In China though, no idea about Australia, don't quote me on that, and definitely not in Russia, because according to Ilya, the local country laws simply kind of don't allow anything to uh, last forever on paper, if you know what I mean. It's, it's a bit of a funny thing, but just because they simply don't accept that type, type of statement, that type of positioning, that's why this, uh, the same kind of the same application of the warranty cannot be applied in Russia, sadly. So, as I promised to you, my friends, in the part number two, we will continue following Ilya as they lift the body of the car off its frame, and they are going to also take apart the interior, all the interior, and all the focus is going to shift from the mechanicals, so to speak, to the interior components, the plastic, uh, the creaking, the other kind of things, and other things that Ilya surely is going to honestly tell us about. I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope I, I am continuing to offer you a balanced opinion on, particularly in this case, we have Cherry Tigo 7 Pro in view, but our our quest for the other cars that represent value for Australians in 2023 and beyond is not going to end here, obviously. So please give me a like and subscribe for more if this is your cup of tea. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be talking to you about something else next week. Goodbye for now.